Shalom Israel. And when I mean Israel, I'm talking about the black, Hispanic, and native Indians. The Lord's 54th annual Passover is going down again this year, sundown, April 1st at 500 South Salisbury Street in Raleigh, North Carolina at the Downtown Conventional Center. It's got enough room for all of us. The Lord's 54th annual Passover. Last year, brothers and sisters showed up from all over the world rocking ancient garments and glorious apparel in order to serve the Most High in Christ. Now, it's that time again. Commander General Johannes putting out the decree for all brothers and sisters to show up sundown, April 1st, in Raleigh, North Carolina. But before then, Thursday, it's going down at the Durham Armory, our annual all-black party. Last year was also the Hebrew Academy graduation dinner. This year, Commander General Yohanna got something special for y'all. It is going down. What's happening? A full-blown Hebrew concert featuring Shaw, UPK Nataza, Quarak Ice. This is not something you want to miss. Join us at the Sheridan in Raleigh, the hotel right downtown. It's at 421 South Salisbury. The Passover is right up the block at the convention center, literally within walking distance. Make sure you pull up. Make sure that you do your due diligence because rooms are going fast and they are limited this weekend. You understand? We have months in advance of preparation. Do not wait till the last minute to get your room. The Lord's 54th annual Passover, Saturday, April 1st, in Raleigh, North Carolina. Join us there. Well, look at this right here, right? You can see the lights, right? Which would sometimes be ornaments or balls. Those would represent heads that would be cut off and placed on the tree if the people did not come and place a gift under this god, this idol. Shalom, Yah, Bashem, Yah, Shah, to all the brothers, Yah, Shema, with Thumb, Bashem, Yah, Shah, to all the sisters, priest and officer, 1000 of Baja, other ISUPK, under commander general, Yahana. I got something special for you right now. We're about to break down this Christmas tree thing that every black, Hispanic, and Native American wants to put in their house, not knowing why y'all putting the Christmas tree in your house, right? Y'all not even knowing why. This is Exodus 20, verse 3. Thou shalt have no other God before me. Right now, if you don't know, Christmas is a God, right? The Christmas tree, you make your God, you you bring it into your house, you bow down before it and open up gifts of tribute, right? You make Christmas your God. And that's why you're not supposed to have any other gods before you because you forget everything about, listen, while you're opening Christmas trees and gifts for children who don't deserve these gifts, $1,000 iPods, there's some brother or sister or child in the world of your nation that's starving, that hasn't ate, but you wanted to buy a thousand dollar iPod or a thousand dollar iPad, right? You want to buy shoes and some toys for kids that are just gonna throw the toys around the house, not appreciate the shoes and break that iPod in the next. Look, the iPod's broken now, right? Or the iPad is broken right now. So let's get into it. Thou shalt have no other God before me. This is Exodus 20 and verse 3. And where can you find it? You can find it in the 1611 KJV, the Bible. There was a a, a Hamite in the Bible, a Cushite, right? A Ethiopian. How have you? His name was Nimrod. Now this Ethiopian, this Cushite or Hamite, he ended up marrying his own mother, Samaramis, right? And when he died, his mother turned around and said, his spirit is now in a evergreen tree, right? And she said, his spirit's in the evergreen tree, and y'all got to come and bring gifts of tribute to this spirit. So, okay, I got one of my candles out. I got to replace that candle in a second, right? But she said, you, you got to come and give spirits, give tribute to this tree, and that's what they did. Right, Nimrod, he was a great hunter and he conquered a lot of the world at that time. Right, he he is the reason why they built the Tower of Babel. 
that just like Christmas in the Western Hemisphere or in Esau's kingdom right now, they use it to bring all nations together. This is what Nimrod was trying to do. He was trying to bring all nations together when he built his, his they tried to build the Tower of Babel, right? So as, as it goes on, he passed away, right? He passed away. His mother turned around. His mother, who was also his wife, turned around and said, his spirit is now in this evergreen tree, right? Now, this woman, she was a whore, right? She turned around and told everybody. Now, Christians, y'all might, y'all might understand this, right? Because this is what Christians believe. She told everybody that my son or my husband got me pregnant after his death. He immaculately conceived, right? He immaculately got me pregnant, right? That's That was the first immaculate conception. Now, y'all Christians are out here thinking that, that the immaculate conception is something only in the Christian church, right? What you're going to find out is that your Christianity is a mixture of all the world religions, all the old gods wrapped up in one, right? So Samaramis told everybody that her son or her husband at the time got her pregnant after his death. That was the first immaculate conception. And when he died, she told everybody, excuse me, that his spirit, his spirit is in this evergreen tree. And you got to bring tributes. And if you didn't bring tributes, that's how you get the gifts. The gifts under the tree were the tributes to Nimrod. And if you don't bring tribute, she would take a sword, a sword like this right here, but just a little longer, and cut your head off, right? That's how you get the gold balls that are on the Christmas tree. That is how you get the gold balls that are on the Christmas tree, right? So I got a couple more precepts that I want to go through with you. So y'all can see that in, in your book, right? In the book of the Israelites, the book of the most high power, you're going to find out that Christmas is not. Christmas has absolutely nothing to do with our power, right? Now let's go to it. This is Jeremiah 10. We're going to start at verse 1. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, right? This is what the Lord spoke unto the children of Israel, right? This is the prophet Jeremiah speaking to the children of Israel. O house of Israel, verse 2. Again, this is Jeremiah 10, verse 2. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. What are the ways of the heathen? Christmas and the Christmas tree and bringing gifts at December 21st, that's the way of the heathen. That has nothing to do with the so-called children of Israel. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. Now, heathens, they look up at these stars and they say, listen, these are the signs, right? The heavens are the are the the skies above us, right? They look at they look at the sky, the stars in the night sky, and they get dismayed. They they make they have whole breakdowns, right? That's why you have you have Christians on a regular basis talk about their horoscope. Verse three: For the customs of the people are vain, right? Now Christmas, it's a vain custom that has nothing to do with us. It these are days where you try to worship. You try to worship what your oppressor told you to worship. When these are not the days, again, we're in the Feast of Hakanaka, right? You can find that in the, in the book of Maccabees, right? In your Apocrypha. You go into your Apocrypha, right? I got an Apocrypha right here. The Apocrypha is the books between the old, so-called Old Testament and the called New Testament in the Bible, right? If Again, if you get you a 16... 11 King James version of the Bible, you will find your apocryphal books, right? We're in Hakanika. That is something we're supposed to celebrate. What the oppressors want to celebrate is vain. It, it's nothing. It's nothing that's going to help us 
Christmas takes so much money away from the so-called Black, Hispanic, and Native American community. Just think about how much money you can save if you don't buy the Christmas tree and you don't buy them kids gifts who, listen, these kids were failing all year. And you're about to buy them some gift and tell them that a white man put it in their chimney. There are no chimneys in the ghetto. Right? Listen, uh, good night. I see a white man in my house talking about ho, 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 ho. He's going to get a casket, 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 Salakia. Right now, I'm not telling you to go and attack anybody. I'm just saying, let's be real. In the middle of the night, you wake up, there's some stranger in your house. He's not coming to leave gifts. He's coming to take everything you have. Right? Let's get back into these scriptures. Jeremiah 10, verse 3. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest. The work of the hands of the workman, right? What does the workman in the forest, you, you would know him as a lumberjack. What does he do? His work is cutting down trees. That's what he does for a living. He cuts down trees so people can make tables, so people can make scrolls, so people can make uh, homes out of these, out of this wood, right? Out of this lumber. The work of the hands of the workman with an axe. That's how you get a tree to be in your house. You cut it down with an axe. Verse 4. Again, this is Jeremiah 10, verse 4. They deck it with silver. Now, I know as if you're a Christian, you, you know that sounds familiar. Look at all. Let's get back to it. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. This Christmas tree doesn't just put itself in it in your home. You bring it into your home. It doesn't stand up right in your house because the roots are coming through your living room floor, right? The, your children aren't bowing down to this tree because the tree decided to sprout in your living room. You cut it down with an axe or a chainsaw because we're in modern times, right? And you nailed it to some tripod so it stood up, right? And then you put Christmas lights on it and it caught on fire and burnt your house down during the Christmas season. This is something that happens regularly to Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Let's go back to it, Jeremiah 10, verse 5. They are upright as palm trees, but speak not. That Christmas tree, you made a God, but it's not going to help you. The, out of all the Christmas trees, the so-called Black, Hispanic, and Native American community have put up, none of them have helped us get out of this oppression. Our brothers and sisters are still dying by the thousands. Babies are still being aborted in the oppressors' abortion clinics. Crack cocaine and heroin and all the dog food and all the Percocets are still ravishing your neighborhoods. They must needs be born. Again, this Christmas tree, you made it a God, but it's not a lie. If you're an Israelite, we serve, Israelites serve a living God, the same God that brought coronavirus, the same God that, that's moving Russia to attack Ukraine, that's moving the rest of the world into World War III. We worship a man of war. That is our power. Because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil. Neither also is it in them to do any good. That Christmas tree does no good in your house, right? Absolutely no good. It, you're not going to get anything productive out of a Christmas, a Christmas tree in your house. What you do get is money wasted, wasted money, money that you could have. Listen, if 15 families put all the Christmas money together, right? That's a small business right there. That, 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 